Reinforcements are on the way. Send the ammunition supply. If it's destroyed, we lose the ammo for our flag guns. World War II. Before we get into it, I'd just like to say a Merry Christmas to you guys. I hope you guys had a nice Christmas yesterday. Uh, I had one, so thanks for asking. No one's gonna have asked, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, so this is the first episode of the World of Show. It's just a series we're gonna be doing alongside the Master the Chief series. If, uh, if you've been watching those videos, you will have noticed we have always been getting diamonds and everything. So we might as well make videos on it. Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering the snipers. It was the first class set that we got gold uh, and then diamond, obviously. So let's get straight into it. So the first sniper, obviously, is the carabin. Now, I'd like to apologise for this god awful gameplay in the background with the carabin. Uh, I had no attachments on this thing and I've not used it in a while and I just could not be asked to use it at all, to be honest. Uh, that's not to say the carabin's a bad gun. I don't want you guys to think that about it, but uh, at this point, I just wasn't used to it and I didn't really see a point to get used to it so just just don't watch the gameplay just listen to my voice instead uh, but when it comes to like the recommended class setup i would say on the turbin uh, it's different than all the other snipers because obviously this is the semi-auto war damage one i'd probably go with the iron sight extender mag and then fmj i think that's probably your best bet kind of just treat it like a semi-automatic assault rifle which has just appalling handling and you can actually do some work with this thing to be honest uh, when it goes to the headshot driver, not the headshot, well it pretty much is headshot so you've got to get one shot killed but the cabin is pretty much only one shot to the head. Uh, when it goes for that then, I would actually recommend just keeping with the regular scope. I find it quite easy to get one shot kills with that scope, just you know, take your time, you can you know, hold your breath. And the best way to get these one shots I found was definitely war. I think war is definitely the best place for just camos in general. But with the cabin especially, with some of the objectives that the enemies have to do, you can definitely get some easy free one shots, the like the bridge stage for example on breakout. A lot of people just go prone on that bridge stage, and while they're prone down there, you can just go ahead and get that free easy one shot kill uh, to the head. Again with things like the uh, tanks on Griffin, when people go ahead and get in the tank, they're just vulnerable there to that free easy one shot kill. Uh, so when it comes to getting headshots, like I said, keep that regular scope. I also recommend ballistic calibration. Super extended mags and then also keep SMG. So moving on to the second snipe here, we've got the Lee Enfield. So the thing with the Lee Enfield is it is weaker than the other two ball actions, well the default ball actions. However, it does have aim assist all the time. So with the Lee Enfield, uh, even if you're not holding your breath, you will get a little bit of aim assist. Uh, in the background, I wasn't too used to that at the start, even though I missed a lot of shots at the start of this gameplay, just because I wasn't used to having that aim assist all the time. Once you get used to it, however, it is very easy to land shots with the Lee Enfield. Uh, for the attachments, you're going to start to notice a pattern here. I would recommend Rapid Fire, Ballistic Calibration and FMJ. I think those are just your best bet. Uh, I don't like Extender Mag, so the simple fact that I do run Escalation on my classes. And so you don't need Extender Mag, because then get a double kill if you reload. And with the Lee Enfield, you already get 10 bullets, which is quite a lot for a sniper. You know, you're, you're never going to get like a 10-man feed, but you need 10 different shots, uh, even if you're playing ground war. So, you know, you don't really need extender mags. Uh, I should also mention the basic trainings for these. Like I said, escalation and lookout. And for the carabin, I'd just keep that the same. Escalation and lookout. Definitely the best bets for snipers. And obviously, division is Kalando, so we can run two basic trainings. Uh, so, yeah, with the Wii Enfield here, definitely a good sniper. I think this is probably the best one to get into when you're just starting to use the snipers because it always has that aim assist. You can get used to it. Uh, this and the carbine, you can get used to them too, they have very similar aiming because the carbine also does have aim assist all the time. But however, if you want to get better at sniping, you want to hit more clips, i definitely then start looking to the last two snipers, which is the Springfield or the M1903, which is the one we'll talk about first. This is probably my personal favourite sniper, the one I've hit the most clips with. Uh, the reason for that is it has the highest damage of the default snipers. Obviously, the PTRS does do more, but that's the DLC one, so don't really talk about that. But yeah, the highest damage, and to say it has that high damage, the fire rate is not too bad to know. You know, a lot of times these uh, highest damage snipers have very slow rate to fire. So, for example, the SVG, or in this game, the WZ35, that thing can't get a hit marker, but also can get a double kill because it's so slow. So, 
Yeah, the Springfield here, definitely a beast of a sniper. Attachments and everything just stays the same. I would also normally be running the 9mm stat, that is probably the best pistol in this game. However, um, obviously, for Chrome, you don't have to get that in gold, so we're currently running the 1911, as I the last pistol need to get gold. Well, diamond for that class. And then the final sniper here is the K98K. I know this is a lot of people's personal favourite sniper, and I can definitely see why. I kind of go back and forth between the Springfield and the car. Some days I can just not hit anything with the Springfield, and I have to use the car. Other days, the way around, like I'm just hitting everything with the Springfield and can't nail anybody with the k 98 k But yeah, I definitely like both of them. Uh, same attachments, same division, same basic trainings on the car. It's kind of like just a faster firing version but you get less damage and if you're wondering how you get this thing by the way if you've not figured out this game's been out for ages just prestige your uh, mountain division yeah mountain division and you can get it you can also get quite a lot of free heroics from just doing the contract for the car 98k which is nice uh so for any tips and tricks to get these things gold they're, they're honestly not that hard to do especially with the water mode that's probably the biggest tip i can give you is just play war you know, what not many people on the wall are sweating. If you are, like, what, why? Why are you sweating? You can't get VCs or streaks on wall. So there's no real point. Uh, it is infested with snipers as it is already wall. With people, you know, making long charges. Because snipers in this game are really simply easy to use. And that's kind of coming on to something I want to talk about, which is snipers in this game compared to snipers in Cold War at the minute. It's a night and day difference between how good they are in this game and how bad they are in Cold War, and despite that, people are just continuing to complain about snipers in Cold War, which I just don't understand, people like Drifter, uh, in Crimzix for example, they just saying that snipers are broken, when, like Jeff says, you can say they're broken, but if you look at the stats, they're not, they're the worst they've ever been in a Call of Duty game, and you compare the World War 2, where the snipers in this game, there's snipers in this game, which literally cannot get hit markers, like the PTRX cannot get a hit marker, yet in that game, about a 50 caliber, 50 caliber bullet is hit mastery most of the time, which I find very strange. I wish snipers in Cold War would get a buff, I actually have to with them to completely remove the emesis from the snipers and just increase the damage, increase the ADS speed, and increase the fire rate, uh, like they did for example in Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4, the snipers in the same games had no emesis, but the snipers themselves were quite good still, like the Paladin, he's still like a beast of a sniper in BO4, he just doesn't have emesis, but it does take skill to use. However, it's rewarding, you know, you're not going to get that many hit markers with it. You've got a decent fire rate and it's, you know, it's fun to use. I mean, you know, Cold War, if you want to actually do well with like the Tundra or the Pel Pellington, yeah, the Pellington I think it is, you can just go sink way too many hours into getting good with it. And I know like some people think that is how snipers should work, you should have to sink hours in to get good, but when you're having to sink multiple hours to not only just unlock attachments, but then also, you know, get used to that very, very small one-shot kill range, uh, range area on the weapons. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that, and I do think that snipers in Cold War actually need a buff. I know a lot of people unfortunately think they need a nerf, and with Treyarch, they don't seem to listen to us at all, so... Uh, I don't know what will happen with the snipers in Cold War, but yeah, snipers in World War 2 are great. They're probably the my favourite thing about this game, are the snipers. You can always come on and try and hit a quad speed, because they're just really easy to use. Uh, they are somewhat frustrating at times, especially on shipment, if you've just got someone who's just around game with snipers. But, uh, yeah, if you want to come on and chill out a war with the Kana AK, on this game you can, which is a lot different to a cold war. I would just like to say, however, don't be that guy, by the way, who, if you notice your team is losing miserably on war, just continue to use the sniper. You know, for example, if you're playing Breakout and, you know, two people in your team out of, you know, nine of you are trying to build the bridge, Go ahead and try and help them, don't just sit back and use the sniper, there's nothing more annoying than especially on Neptune when you're trying to push them two bunkers because Neptune's start is the most annoying thing in the world and you die uh, right at like the top and you come back and just notice that your entire team just sat back with snipers just don't be that guy, you know, play the objective if like you're losing obviously if like your team's steamrolling them then pull out the sniper but if not you know, play the objective a little bit at least that's fun so in terms of ranking these four snipers, uh, I don't really think you can rank them. I think all four of them do something a little bit different uh, than each other. So for example, a lot of people put the carbon at the bottom, but if you're looking for like a sniper to use at like bridge stage or the start of the next tune, then the carbon is probably your best choice because the thing has no recoil to be fair, so it's just a semi-automatic. Fire is fast, 
so easy to get headshots with so if you want to get like a few headshot fees the carbon might be a go-to but definitely work can be done with the carbon and then when it comes to the enfield again a lot of people like the enfield just because of its lower damage so i would say if you're coming from like a call of duty game where snipers do have quite a bit of aim assist so for example uh coming to this game from infinite warfare where the snipers do have aim assist for example like the widowmaker uh, the way Enfield was the easiest one to get into, just because they always had that aim assist. Compare that to like the Springfield and the car, they don't have that aim assist, they only have it when you hold your breath. So the Enfield definitely serves a purpose there for people like that. And if people are definitely want to put time into the game, the car and the Springfield definitely are your best bet still to have you know the best damage, great fire rate, and it's just yeah, your best bet if you want to put time into the game. But if you want to bounce from Call of Duty to Call of Duty, you're not gonna get used to that weird you don't want to get aim assist and hold your breath and the Enfield will probably be the better sniper so if we're talking overall best sniper in this game there's only one which you just stand out above the rest and that's got to be the PTRS this thing has the second fastest fire rate in its class it's only beaten by the Carabin in which you can't get a hit marker as long as you direct hit them you can get hit markers through walls obviously but if you direct hit somebody this thing just cannot get a hit marker and with escalation you know even though it only comes with five bullets and the mag you know, you just keep reloading every time you get a double kill. This thing is just a beast. I've got so many good uh, clips with this thing. The only problem with it is people aren't that impressed by PTRS clips. They thought there's something special like my one shot triple, for example, from the smoke was quite impressive clips if I do say for myself. And so yeah, that's how I would say if you want to get one good sniper in this game, just wait for the PTRS contract or think for the Vermin, I believe it is, the PTRS that you can buy in the shop. And yeah, that would be it. I don't think you can rank the four base snipers. I think they're all you know, good in different scenarios. It depends how you play. But yeah, that has been episode one of the Road to Chrome. I'm going to be uploading this every Saturday, hopefully. Hopefully we don't have the same fate that the Black Sky series had. Uh, that might be coming back, actually. If you guys uh, like these videos, we might go back and see the Black Sky one eventually. And so yeah, I've been Charles X. Leave a like. If you did enjoy, subscribe to keep up to date. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas.